Welcome back, everyone. In part two of this lecture on this new attention disorder, cognitive disengagement syndrome, I'm going to focus on some of the cognitive and other differences that distinguish it from ADHD. So in the last lecture, we talked about some of the differences of the nature of SCT or CDS symptoms compared to ADHD. Now let's look at some of the other differences. Does CDS have a different pattern of demographic findings? Yes, it does. First, about 4 to 5% of children and an equal number of adults in my US surveys had CDS, or at least high symptoms of it that produced impairment. Those are two good criteria for a disorder. Compare that to the 7 to 10% of children that have ADHD and about 3 to 5% of adults. So it looks like CDS is nearly as prevalent as ADHD, but may not show the declines that we see in ADHD with age. More on that in a moment. What percentage of children might present to clinics with CDS? A couple of studies, one in Spain, found that it was about one in five children coming to outpatient mental health clinics might qualify for CDS. What about sex differences? We know that ADHD is three times more common in boys than girls. By adolescence, that drops down to about two to one, males to females, and by adulthood, it is down to about one and a half to one, males to females. So you can see that there's a change in the sex ratio of ADHD that's going on over time. And as my other lectures point out, that probably has to do with the fact that there are different onsets of ADHD for girls and women, uh, and that can lead to them eventually catching up with ADHD in males by adulthood, that is catching up in terms of prevalence. In SCT, or CDS, as it's now called, there are no apparent sex differences. Some large population studies suggest that boys might have slightly more of the symptoms, but the differences are minor. And if we cast CDS as a disorder, do you meet criteria for it or not? There is no sex difference in the rate or prevalence of the disorder. As I've already pointed out, it appears that ADHD shows some decline, particularly in the hyperactive symptoms over time, and also a decline in prevalence from about 7 to 10% of children to about 3 to 5% of adults, suggesting that maybe up to a third of children with ADHD don't qualify for the disorder anymore by adulthood. Uh, I think that's a very generous rate of remission, but that's what the demographics might suggest. CDS, we don't see that. It's very stable over time. A little bit of a decline with age, but hardly anything to comment on. Uh, and so it looks like it's a different disorder. It seems to have a, a somewhat later onset than the symptoms of ADHD, uh, and it doesn't seem to show, as I said, the sex differences. So there are demographic differences between these two attention disorders. And as it says in the bottom here, CDS appears to be even more associated with various demographic or socioeconomic disadvantages, as well as distress and childhood adverse events than we would see even in ADHD, which is also associated with those factors, but not as much as CDS might be. So that could be another difference. CDS might be linking up more with social disadvantage and childhood adversity than even ADHD is. Now, there are cognitive differences that we see as well. There's no disinhibition or impulsivity seen in CDS. So clinicians, if you're looking for the one thing to distinguish someone from ADHD, someone with CDS, it's impulsivity. Impulsiveness tracks with ADHD and it's poor self-regulation. It doesn't track with CDS. Now, we do know that there is a small relationship, negative, between ADHD and IQ. I have a separate lecture under my commentaries playlist on that. The relationship of CDS to IQ is even smaller. There's still one there, but it's rather minor, suggesting that people with CDS might 
have a few less IQ points. But that's questionable because other studies didn't find any relationship between IQ and CDS at all. When we look at people with CDS cognitively, we see that they don't have chronic slow motor responding. So the original name, SCT, was wrong. They aren't always sluggish in responding. We also found that their reaction time wasn't necessarily slow, though in younger children it might be. In older kids and adults, it wasn't. There was some evidence that people with CDS had inefficient working memory and had difficulties organizing information. There's only a couple of studies on that, so it might be true, but we don't see the problem in processing speed of information. It really has more to do with recall and organizing of mental information. There's very inconsistent evidence on reaction time, as I've said. If we do continuous performance tests, might be more evidence that people with CDS have omission errors. They miss the signals they're supposed to be paying attention to and looking for on this computer test. But even that isn't definitive. So at the moment, we're not seeing an awful lot of cognitive differences in CDS from typical individuals. And we're certainly not seeing the pattern that we see in ADHD of impulsiveness, commission errors, high variability of reaction time, and so on. There are about three or four studies that have looked at the different forms of attention in CDS, and they find that the principal type of attention deficit is in focused or selective attention. Not in sustained attention like we see in ADHD, but focused attention. What does that mean? It means that people with CDS seem to be somewhat slower to orient to things in the environment and to important details within that environment. And we don't see that with ADHD at all. People with ADHD, as you know, can't persist at attending and may be distracted by information around them. It's a very different kind of attention deficit. One study found that adults with CDS seem to prefer work in the evening hours rather than in the mornings or afternoons. It's just one study. It's hard to say that this is a definitive difference in what's called the diurnal rhythm in adults, but that study is out there. There's little, if any, evidence of deficits in executive functioning, particularly on tests of executive functioning that link up with CDS. Whereas, as we know, there's much more evidence of executive functioning deficits in groups of people with ADHD, whether kids or adults. ADHD is a disorder of EF. CDS does not appear to be so. Although, as I'll show you, there's a few studies that do show some small selective executive deficits on rating scales that assess EF when we assess that in people with CDS. And you can see that here. Here's a study of mine where we're comparing the control group in white to people with ADHD in red to people with SCT, or now CDS in yellow, and to people who had both disorders here in light blue. And you can see that compared to the control group, all three attention uh, disorder groups do have some deficits in executive functioning. But it's mainly in people with ADHD or people with both disorders. However, that's very deceiving because when we control for each disorder in looking at the relationship of the other disorder to executive functioning, we find that it's really only ADHD and especially its attention dimension that is correlated with all these deficits in executive functioning. To put it another way, as you can see here, the symptoms of CDS, called SCT in the graph, don't correlate much at all with executive functioning once you have controlled out for the overlap with inattention.
And we see the same thing in adults here. I won't go through that any further. So it's fair to say then that it's really ADHD inattention that explains the majority of deficits in ratings of executive functioning. Hyperactivity explains very little and CDS explains only about one to 5% trivial amounts. Again, what does that mean? It means that ADHD is a disorder of EF, CDS is not. Now, CDS and ADHD can overlap. If we view them as separate disorders, there is no reason that they can't coexist with each other. They're, after all, not opposites on the same spectrum of attention. They're different attention disorders. So just as you can have ADHD and have depression or ADHD and have a learning disorder, you can have ADHD and CDS. And that's what we found in our national surveys when I conducted a separate survey of children and another survey of a large sample of US adults. You can see the overlap here. About 59% of cases of CDS in childhood also had some type of ADHD, but 40% roughly did not. On the other hand, when we look at adults, it's somewhat less. About half of cases of CDS also had some type of ADHD, usually the inattention presentation, and half of them did not. So what are we seeing here? The pattern is more one of comorbidity. About half of the cases of one don't have the other. But in about half of the cases, they do overlap to some extent. And by the way, as you'll see, when they overlap, it's a much worse condition than either attention disorder by itself. We'll have some evidence for that showing up in a somewhat later lecture. So. That's part two. What are the cognitive differences between CDS and ADHD? And there are clearly differences. Principally, ADHD is a disorder of executive functioning and a very different disorder of attention, sustained attention with distractibility. CDS, in contrast, is not a disorder of executive functioning and appears to be more of a problem with the focus selective an orienting aspect of attention and has no association with impulsivity. All right, in the next lecture, we're going to take a look at how these disorders differ in their patterns of comorbidity. So stay tuned.